Okay, cool. So, once you've got Agitant installed and all that, just launch it up, and what we'll do is we'll get right into this and start it off. So, I'm just going to get any old any old map here. Uh, I'm going to try to remember how to do BSPs, because they're the map files. I haven't done it in a while, but I'll do my best to get that going. And um, I'll show you how to get um, assets from Agitant into 3ds Max and into Blender. Um, because there's a really helpful sort of process that goes from Agitant to 3ds Max to Blender, which really sort of speeds everything up for you. Um, so to start off, what we'll do is we'll go with um, with where you find any general sort of models for these games. And across Halos 2 to 4, the process is the same in Agitant. I don't know how to get models out of Halo Combat Evolved uh, Anniversary, and I've never actually done it with Combat Evolved because I have no interest in those models. So what we'll do is, you want to find any models, it's under the render model here, and I'll just show you really quickly, I'll just go for any old, any old thing here, you click on it, give it something that you can actually see. Okay, Cortana's chip, cool, whatever. Um, so if you uh, left, left, mouse, left mouse click and drag, you can um, like, uh, what? Well, just move the move the view around, and then you can also use WASMD to actually physically move within the space. You can also search for what you want at the bottom here. So I'm going to use the Master Chief uh, as an example for this. Um, so same thing. It's under under the render model, and you see here we've got the Master Chief. Once we show everything, so for for all the all the assets, you can show and hide various bits and pieces of them. Um, and I'm pretty sure this part down here is supposed to be able to enable me to export things that are just located within the viewport. For some reason, I get really weird scaling with Agitant, so that's not feasible for me. So what we'll do, if you have the same problem or you just want to do it this way, <laughs> by all means do it this way. You come to the raw extractor and you can export the bitmaps and the model. So I'll just... Show you an example, it's pretty self explanatory, but I'll just show you anyway. So, if you wanted to export the bitmaps, just find some sort of folder and um, double click on that and dump everything into there and do the same for the model. So, just put those both in the, relatively the same spot and uh, that'll help. Um, but what I will show you how to do is export model. So, the process from 3ds Max to Blender becomes really helpful with these EMF files. You can muck around with the EMF files if you want, but from my knowledge, EMF files are a more up-to-date version of AMF files and have less chance of breaking, just more stable in general. So you make an EMF file, save that. I've already got one prepared here. And then so to actually get these things into 3ds Max, you need a script. So if we go up to the top here, you've got this toolbar. You can generate a Max script and you can generate either AMF or EMF. Once again, click on those and just put it into some sort of spot and um, easy as that. So now... I told you how to get those. Now, BSPs are something I haven't done in a while. Uh, I just need to hit enter on that just so it goes back to everything. I'll see I'll see what I can do to find these BSP files where you find the maps. I, know, I think it's slightly different across um, the, the games from 2 to 4 in Agitant, but I'll do my best to find it right now in here and see what we can get. Okay, cool. So I found it. It's under scenario structure underscore BSP. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's the exact same for all the Halos, but I know for 4 that that's where it's under. It's probably the same for the other ones, and uh, it follows the exact same principles as actually um, exporting uh, the render model files. It's a matter of clicking on it, going to the model viewer, and uh, evidently these maps are quite large and got a lot of detail and texture to them, so it can be quite taxing on your on your computer depending how good it is, but mine seems to be acting up a bit today. Um, so I'm not actually going to worry about showing you that, but I'll just show you this. Um, you know, you have the ability to pick out whatever elements you want, export bitmaps, export um, the actual BSP itself into an object or an EMF or an AMF. And um, yeah, so for these things that I'm going to do with the example of the Chief, you can follow the exact same processes, uh, whether it be a render model or a BSP. It all works the exact same. Okay, cool. So here we are on 3ds Max, and um, I can't actually show you how to get this little pop-up here um, because I'm using the Windows game recorder, so I can't do it. 
Anyway, it, it's really self-explanatory. Just find wherever you've got the EMF uh, importer and just drag and drop the file into the viewport of 3ds Max. It's that simple and um, this will pop up. So first things first, um, one thing I've just learned over time is that you want to turn off this import markers. If they're actually useful for something, don't because then you might screw yourself over. I have no use for them because I have no idea what they do, so I just disable that. So what we'll do is we'll load the EMF file and we just want to find wherever that's saved, just double click on it. And then we get another pop-up and this is just asking for wherever you saved all the texture files. So in my case, it's just in this part here. So we'll just say OK. And this will just start to, as you can see in the background, just start to generate the mesh and uh, the rig and the shaders at the very end. So I'll just let it do that. Okay, cool. So that's done. So we'll just close that out. Um, all right, so I've got like literally no experience with 3ds Max. So I'll do my best to try and navigate it. Um, okay, cool. So as you'll see, um, it's generated t shaders, um, it's put a rig together, and in my case I don't have any markers because I don't know what they're for, I don't use them, I just find them a pain. So we've got that. So if you just wanted to get this into 3ds Max then you're all done. If you want to get this into Blender now, you're going to have to keep watching. So what we'll do is just go Control A, select everything, file, export, select it. And I know you can just go export, but I've just grown a habit of doing this. <laughs> Uh, and now just find wherever you want to put this FBX, just somewhere that's easy for you to get. Um, oh, it's really weird like this. Uh, I've got to click on the file, give it a name. Chief FBX, I'll just overwrite the old one. Save, yes. I don't muck around with that because I don't know what any of it does. And I can fix that in Blender. Cool. So that's literally the whole process for 3ds Max. It's that easy, it's that simple, and uh, just about as simple for Blender. Okay, cool. So what we'll do is start off, just go AX, delete everything, and file import FBX. And so what we'll do is, I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to show you what happens um, if you don't modify some settings, just because it's going to be quicker for me and for you guys as well. So what we'll do, before we import this chief FBX here, what we'll do is we'll come over to the armatures. And what we want to do is ignore leaf bones and do automatic bone orientation. Now, you can find out for yourself what happens if you don't do that. Pretty much all that this is doing is correcting the rig that it generated back in 3ds Max. And it just does its best to clean everything up because it's kind of messy. It's quite messy when you first import it. Um, but if you do this, it just gets rid of any fragmented bones that are unnecessary and um, it orients the bones in what what seems to be the best orientation. It doesn't always get perfect, but it just helps clean it up, and it means you have to do less manual manual work. So we'll just import this FBX now. Um, and like I said, you can do it for yourself and and uh, actually find out uh, how it looks. So I know that if you go from like say Adjutant and you export it as an object. I know that you need to rotate the object on the x to, on the x axis by negative ninety degrees and then scale it down by 0 0.1. I'm pretty sure that's that's the correct sort of scaling for it. But from 3ds Max to Blender, I'm not entirely sure. I think if you change these to one, no, that's wrong. So maybe it's the same. So if you change it to 0 0.1, that looks about right. Okay. So what you want to do is if you're going from either Adjutant to Blender or from 3D or from Adjutant to 3ds Max to Blender. What you want to make sure you have is the scale set to 0.1. That seems to be in line with the other assets I have. Um, I've gotten that figure from talking to other people, and it seems to be in line with all the Halo 5 assets that I own. So it seems to be pretty good. So I'll show you here. So like the, the rig's a bit messy, uh, but there's a lot of it that you can actually take out and manually do. So if you know anything about rigging, I mean, I know nothing i'm terrible at it well i don't know nothing i'm terrible at it but i know enough that i can take away a lot of those bones um and correct it with copy rotations and um add ik's to it all to make it about 10 times better so you can start to clean all that up as sees fit um, but the reason that we've gone through 3ds max first is because well one it's, it's generated this rig for us and uh two it's actually done all the weight it's actually put all the weights on here for us, which is nice. So, okay, there you go. That, that's an example of 
a redundant bone because you you don't need that happening. Um, same with that. But there's a lot of redundant things that come with the rigs that is that are generated. But you'll find a couple in here. Well, not a couple. You'll find a fair few actually. That actually do what you want it to do, and it does it quite well most of the time. Um, I mean, you're, like I said, you have to set up your own IKs. I don't know what FKs are, but you might have to set up FKs. Um, but for the most part, it sets it up all pretty well for you. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not going to show you how to make shader setups because I'm pretty sure I've already said um, that you know there's like a million ways to make one shader. Um, I'm not going to do it for you. Um, Halo 4 didn't use PBR setups, but that's not to say that you can't uh, modify the textures and do all sorts of wicked things to them to make it look way better and suited towards PBR materials because there's honestly no limits to this stuff. So that about does it. That sums everything up. That shows you how to get assets from Agitant to 3ds Max, Agitant to Blender, Agitant to 3ds Max to Blender. It's covered it all. So hopefully somebody finds this useful and... Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy.